In this video, I'll be building a toolbox from plans that are available on my website. I made mine from solid wood and it has four drawers in the bottom, two wide ones that are shallow, plus two deeper ones and all four run on full extension wooden drawer slides. There's a deep tray on the top for your other tools, plus the lid is deep enough and big enough to store your hand saws. I'm using ash to build the majority of the box and I started out by doing some stock prep. I uh, planed it down to the correct thickness and actually cut the parts to the rough size so I could make some of the bigger panels. And here I'm just gluing those up with woodworking glue and biscuits to keep the parts in line. And here's what that rough lumber looks like before I plane it down to the correct thickness. And these parts that I'm cutting out here are for the rest of the toolbox. They're small enough that they don't have to be glued up into bigger panels. And that would be drawer fronts in the front of the toolbox and the parts for the lid. I'm also going to use some walnut. So I've got this big hunk here. I'm going to cut it to length on a miter saw and then flatten one face on the jointer and square up one edge before cutting it into strips to make the raised panel for the lid. To glue the strips together, I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive and biscuits to line up the parts. These are smaller biscuits though, number 10. And once again, I'm using a few of my wooden bar clamps to clamp it up nice and tight and set it aside to dry. I gave the glue overnight to dry and the next morning I got out my scraper and a card scraper to first of all remove the squeeze out and I'm using a card scraper here just to demonstrate how this could be done manually you know to flatten the panel but since I have a surface planer I'm going to be doing it the easy way. Then I can use my Norm Abrams style sled and trim off the ends nice and square and set that aside until later. Now I can start working on the bigger parts that I glued up in the beginning. This would be the back panel and the two side panels. And after cutting them to the proper size, I need to cut a series of slots in there. And these ones here are for the quarter inch plywood panels that go inside the box. And then I also need wider slots in the side panels, and these are for the drawer slides. And once again, I'm just using a single blade, making a series of cuts. And then when I have that done, I can take one of the drawer slides I made earlier and check the fit to make sure that it's not too tight. And this is too tight, so I can resize the slot before I go any further. These slides need to have a little bit of play to work properly. Now what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the fence to make a rabbit cut into the side panels that's equal to the thickness of the back panel. And once again, I'm just gonna make a series of cuts with the single blade to complete that rabbit. I've also got to do the same kind of thing for some of the parts for the front. They need a rabbit as well. And all of the drawer side panels need to have that slot as well for the drawer slide to fit into. And once again, it needs to be the correct fit, not too tight. So I'm still working on the parts for the drawer here. 
And this rabbet that I'm cutting here is for the quarter inch bottom panel of the drawers. And next I need to work on the drawer slides themselves. They need two slots in each one and the fastest and easiest way to do that is on the table saw making a stop cut and I'm doing that on one side to begin with and then gluing in a small piece to close that end and letting that dry before I cut the slot in the other end and block the end of that in the same way. Now while the glue is drying on those, I can pull up my router table. I need a 3 8 inch dowel made from walnut, so I cut a square blank that's 3 8 of an inch, and I'm using a router bit to round over the corners. I'm also going to take this time to make the poles for the drawer fronts, once again from walnut, and I cut those to the correct size on the table saw, and then just round over the front with that same bit again on the router table. Now back to the drawer slides again, the glue is dried and I can trim off those blocks on each end. And here's how it looks in both slots when they're put together. It needs to move freely back and forth without getting hung up. I got one other operation I need to do with these slides and that's to cut a V-groove kind of counterbore slot. I'm going to use the router table again with the V-groove bit and only one side of each slot gets done but on opposite sides. I made this guide stick to locate the hole that I need to drill for the screw and that goes in that holds the slide in place. And the masking tape tells me how deep to drill into the side panels. I don't want to drill all the way through. This is a three quarter inch long number four screw and this holds that slide in. You want to drive that all the way in and then back it off a turn so that the slide moves back and forth freely. And it's important to note that this screw doesn't support the drawer slide, it just acts as a stop. And I drill the same hole on the side panels for each of the drawers, except this material is a lot thinner, so I'm just drilling all the way through. Really doesn't matter for a drawer, especially not for a drawer in a toolbox. And this part is the center divider for the deeper drawers that are in the bottom. And on this one, I'm going to drill two holes so that I can orient the slides opposite each other so that I won't have a screw driven into the same place. Now I'm going to take all the parts where the drawer slides operate and give those two coats of water-based polyurethane and that seals the wood in those areas and it also helps to make the drawer slide smoother. And then while I'm waiting for that to dry I can cut out the quarter inch plywood panels that go inside the box. There are three of those. And another thing that I can do is make the raised panel for the top. And I'm going to be doing that on my table saw. I've got a fence clamped on at an angle and I'm making a series of cuts, raising the blade a little bit at a time until I get it cut in enough so that it fits in the dados in the parts for the lid. To clean up that saw cut, I'm using a scraper with a round edge. And I'm also sanding it as well. The water-based polyurethane dried on the parts, so now I can start assembly. I'm going to get the drawer slides screwed into the side panels to begin with. And here's that center divider for the drawers I was talking about. I'm going to drive the screw for one slide on one side. And you can see i got a bit of a turtle head poking out here. I'm going to file that off on this one, but I'll file the tip off the screw before I drive in the other one, so it doesn't do the same thing. Now I can start putting the box together and the first thing I'm doing is gluing in the bottom panel and gluing the sides to the back panel and the bottom panel that's already in there. And for this I'm using the construction adhesive again because it gives me a lot more time to position the parts and get everything clamped up. And speaking of clamps, more of my wooden ones and after I get a few of those on I can glue on some more parts and get those clamped up as well. So 
So if you don't have a bunch of clamps, there's an alternate way to hold this together until the glue dries. And that's the layout where the dowels will be put in after and dry screws in there instead. And then after the glue sets, you can take these screws out again and finish drilling the 3 8 inch hole. What I'm doing here is putting the lid together and I'm actually gluing this solid wood panel to the front of the lid and that'll allow it to expand and contract, but it'll also add a lot of strength to that front edge. To accurately locate that divider between the two drawers on the bottom, I'm actually putting two of the drawers partly together to use the spacers. I'll slip those in and that will put the divider panel in the right place. And then I can roll the toolbox over onto its back and clamp that divider in place with a long reach clamp before driving in a couple of screws. With that done, I can put the rest of the drawers together with glue and screws. And it's important to check to make sure that these are the proper fit. They can't be too snug. You want a little bit of play here side to side so that they'll move freely. Each drawer gets a quarter inch bottom panel, and you can use clamps here, but I'm gonna drive in a few brads instead. Now I can get the dowels put in and these reinforce the joints that are just glued together. I'm going to drill about an inch deep and then drive in the dowel with some glue on there. While the glue is drying on the dowels, I can get the last quarter inch divider panel put in and glued down to that center divider between the drawers. Before I do any sanding, I want to get the lid installed. That way I can sand everything flush on the same plane. And this is a piano hinge, and I made a separate video showing how I did this. And there's a link in the description that'll take you to the build article where you'll find that video. But once the lid is installed and lined up properly, I can actually clamp it closed and do all of the sanding with 100 grit first, and then I'm gonna to switch to 220, and then I'll finish up with hand sanding. After that, I can get the walnut handles put on the drawers, once again using glue and firing in some pins to hold those in place. And then the final step, of course, is to give the box and finish. I'm gonna be using water-based polyurethane, put on the total of three coats, sanding lightly in between coats. And I like water-based polyurethane because it doesn't add a yellow tinge to the wood. It leaves it looking very natural. I made one change after I had it all done. I added a small handle to the lid on the front and this makes it a little bit easier to open the lid, and it also looks better too. It was looking kind of empty up there before. The final step is to install the drawers, and if you watch the drawer slide video, you'll know how this goes. It's just a matter of putting the drawer in, driving the screw all the way in, and then backing it off so that the slide operates freely. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, plans are available for this project, and there's a link in the description that'll take you right there. And you don't need to have fine hardwood to build this box. You can build it from just about anything. And that includes almost 100% from plywood as well. Whatever you choose, you're going to wind up with something that not only looks good, but is very functional as well. It has plenty of convenient storage in a fairly compact package.